Good evening, everybody. I want to begin with a poem that is not mine. That is um, a poem by the great uh, Barbadian poet, uh, Kamal Brathwaite, who died about a week ago. Um, this might be one of the poets that um, Jasmine and I uh, talked about, because I was trying to understand her Caribbean roots. And and there and yeah, there there is something there. I I, I knew it instantly, even before us talking about it. Mm. Uh, there's a, a a remark that Kamal made that I always turn to and I'm reminded of. And he said somewhere that um, the unity is submarine. Um, he was speaking about the colonial condition, the Black Atlantic experience of this fragmentary state that you are f this fractured person walking around, so many things that you don't know about you, right? But he has this notion that uh, it's, it's, the unity is there, it is present, it is submarine. Yeah. And things like poetry is one instance of uh, bringing it to shore, that instantly we can realize what makes us connect from across uh, the ocean, from an island in the Caribbean to a country in, 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 in Africa. This one is called South, and it's from a book called Rites of Passage. And it is part of a sequence, the last poem in a sequence called Island and Exiles. And here the, the, um, the poet speaker is imagining or describing a return to to his home after having gone to America, Europe, and West Africa, he finds himself back on the little rock called home, South. But today I recapture the island's bright beaches, blue mists from the ocean rolling into the fishermen's houses. By these shores I was born, sound of the sea came in at my window. Life heaved and breathed in me then with the strength of that turbulent soil. Since then, I have traveled, moved far from the beaches, sojourned in stonier cities, walking the lands of the north in sharp, slanting sleet and the hail, crossed countless, saltless savannas and come to this house in the forest where the shadows oppress me and the only water is rain and the tepid taste of the river. We who were born of the ocean can never seek solace in rivers. Their flowing runs on like our longing, reproves us our lack of endeavor and purpose proves that our striving will thunder on that. We resent them, this wisdom, this freedom, passing us toiling, waiting and watching their cunning declension down to the sea. But today I would join you, traveling river, borne down the years of your patientest flowing, past pains that would wreck us, Sorrows arrest us, hatred that washes us up on the flats, and moving on through the plains that receive us, processioned in tumult, come to the sea. Bright waves splash up from the rocks to refresh us, blue seashells shift in their wake, and there is the touch of the fishermen's houses, the path made of pebbles, and look, small urchins combing the beaches look up from their traps to salute us. They remember us, just as we left them. The fisherman, hawking the surf on this side of the reef, stands up in his boat and hallows us. A starfish lies in its pool, and gulls, white sails, slanted seaward, fly into the limitless morning before us. And two poems from me. I have to scale down Mount Paranassus uh, a bit and wait to 
regain that height with Jasmine. She mentioned that uh, Frederick Douglass chose this day to be his birthday. Of course, he didn't know his date of birth. I remembered that, and I was prepared. You know, she actually <laughs> brought with me this lecture I gave on Frederick Douglass in Newcastle, where Douglass, fortunately, when he was in exile, running away from being captured and brought back to slavery, um, his freedom was bought uh, by two women who um, in, in the, the town of Newcastle. And um, when I was there giving this talk, uh, and I came to the point in my lecture in saying that uh, it was very emotional. Some people in the audience knew, uh, and, uh, and some did not. Um, but one person came up to me and said, oh, I, I know the house where those two ladies lived. There were two sisters. And, um, and it was a very touching uh, moment when that was said. I did bring this for um, Jasmine. Uh, to exchange, you know, your book from my this year. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and um, Douglas makes a, a small cameo in this poem. Um, he wouldn't have really liked it, but here, here goes. The poem is called There, and it's set in, in Baltimore. The serial killer line in Chaucer bloomed. The smiler with the knife under the cloak in my head down Bolton Hill. A perfect epitha for this city, Frederick Douglass's beard braced through a slight tourist crowd milling at the harbor. Below the bloodshot sign of the Domino Sugar Building, flashing ghettos beyond this point. There, Whole blocks shush by some medieval plague. There, traffic balked for miles into a blaring cartege. There, a current pulled me one morning after beating out the fretted equanimity nested on my tender crops, who winced and sang the tales. For I, Tris Trapeque's man, ice pick raconteur, who loved the sponde of the furnace, feared a knife sliced my throat, chipped over an imaginary moat, an anachronistic river sighed below the asphalt. I heard a man yell in his cell, get the fucking money, Pete. I lowered my head, holy as daylight paled into a horse, pluming towards me. I laughed, it halted, oh my chevalier. And I will end with a poem called A Horace to Horace. And I don't know, typical, set in Jamaica, the eastern section of the island, um, where production of sugarcane is still a, an activity that many people make their livelihood from. And the educational system there is uh, flawed, right? It's, most schools were founded by the smaller schools. Even the high schools were founded by my missionaries. And so there's that sort of complex to it. This sort of um, you get what you get and you don't be upset, but not in the Montessori sort of way. You know, you just have to... <laughs> to um, um, roll with the punches, and if you can't, then you're forgotten. And um, many kids, not with learning disabilities whatsoever, but just simply couldn't roll with the punches at the pace that the teacher uh, commanded the lesson. So I sort of recall one figure like that, um, um, whose name is Horace, but it's also swinging outwards to the kind of wider colonial um, issue. A Horace to Horace. Lost causes confound. Where are you, cousin, since you swung upside down the iron gate outside school? The earth is your sky. Correct me. 
was. I blame the missionaries. I blame myself for getting the words below Annie Volaton's fluent drawings. You drew blank, swung and swung, the hinges gnashing in my ears, wing out her maximum expression with a minimum of lines. Impossible, but wait a while. Me, undermine the upper classes. What upper classes exactly? Copper isn't gold, nor is there a meadow or a brook in those crannies wedged on hillside plots. Schemes, excuse me. Cinder blocks and grills, artillery teetered like upholstered derelicts amid fruit trees. They too are survivors. They live off the blood franchise I refuse, with undue respect to forgive and move on. Even the best possible outcome, you flew an avenging angel speed, was possible. Forgive me. Is. Ivory shade burns your steep descent up the shortcut, bearing our trampled anonymity, our overfrugal marigolds and devil's horse whips. When progress takes hold in whatever form, it will be belated and advance nothing. I insist you stride on air, fierce, tender. <laughs> uh, Jasmine's poetry distinguishing markers are many. Two comes to mind now torsion and compression. Her lyric instances rupture and healing at once. Such severance with the capacity for wholeness is rare in a poet so young. I admire Jasmine's poetry for it refuses complacency. I admire how she hones the sheer glossolalia of the fugitive self to gather up the unity Kamo Brathwaite says is submarine. Jasmine. Hey everyone, good evening. Um, it's so lovely and incredible to see all of your beautiful faces here um, on this the 14th, this, this Valentine's Day, um, which I hold as a self-love day and, and as a friend love day and as a family love day. Um, and so it's really so beautiful for y'all to be here um, celebrating this incredible occasion. Um, for me, this is very much a dream of dreams coming true. Um, and I never um, imagined that it would be filled with, with so much love and generosity um, and beauty. So thank you all. So I thought that we might begin with, I guess, a little bit of an introduction to the book. And so I wanted us to start at the, the epigraph, which is um, from Sylvia Plath, The Bell Jar. So I'll, I'll read it. I thought I would swim out until I was too tired to swim back. As I paddled on, my heartbeat boomed like a dull motor in my ears. I am, I am, I am. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about the bell jar. So if you don't want to hear, I suggest covering your ears for the next like 30 seconds. Um, but in this, in this, this quotation, Esther, the kind of the protagonist and the narrator of the novel, um, is attempting to drown herself. Um, and so the, the swimming out is very literal. And the heartbeat, the boom, the I am, the I am, I am. Um, for me, it holds persistence and, and kind of bodily uh, possibility. So in this quotation, the mind, the body, the engine is attempting to drown itself, but the heart resists that notion, it persists. Um, the heartbeat booming like a dull motor in my ears, a heart that is tired, that is worn, but persists. Um, and for me, I thought 
uh, to begin the book with this quotation because it's so significant to me, but also it kind of it kind of creates space for the rest of the book to to happen. So, um, at the conclusion of the bell jar, there's this this moment of deliberation where Esther is she's been institutionalized after um, several suicide attempts, um, and the board of the institution is kind of deliberating on whether she's going to be let out of the the mental institution. And the book ends there. And I thought that this in interlocution with that book could be a space um, where my poems begin after that moment of deliberation. Um, yeah. And as well, it, it feels important to say that um, another reason why that title or that epigraph is so significant to me is that I myself do and have struggled with, with suicidality um, and other kinds of trauma and violence. And so, um, ever since I kind of picked up the bell jar, a thing that I do is I'll say, I am, I am, I am, um, and remind myself that I'm alive and that I have possibility um, and futurity ahead. Um, and so the next poem is Rosenberg's Reprieve. Um, a little bit of context. So the Rosenbergs, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, were executed by the United States government for espionage and essentially for leaking nuclear uh, secrets to the Soviet Union. And so this, this poem imagines a reprieve for them, but also like a reprieve for them by way of my own or the speaker's own body. And so there's this kind of reckoning with the body as also um, a state apparatus or a state, a subject of state. Rosenberg's reprieve. In the final hour of memory, my elocution elides its voltage. Like a misuttered current, my bright does not slay the hands, tongue, or rattle the spine into loose particles. Little lights clap on and on, darken me sweet as the night sky. Dear sky, thank you for holding gently this occasion of collision, syzygy, and the wide wonder of stars burning their light. For this, for this, tonight, I will let stay my murmuring willow heart. Uh, for grace, for grave. I paint my nails in blue heaven's soft colors. The way a beast might saw its claws to dust the doorstep of spring. Shed teeth, shorn beak, laid down like an old blade, begging for flowers instead. Call it burial if it means I am becoming soil. If I am more killable this way, more human too. This prey in cropped cloth, this prey with no sharp. This way to the cat call, this way to the plucking. Thick paws around the bird neck, squeeze, squawk, squeeze. This way to the meat, this way to the beasts who do not ask permission or forgiveness. I begged forgiveness in my beakless way, laying out in a bed of snow, spread eagle wide as surrender. I'm going to take a pause and actually kind of re-begin just to say thank you so much. Um, I thank you all, but I also specifically want to thank Jessica, Chi, Anastasia, and Sarah for organizing the event. Um, dearest Aishin, thank you so much for being here and for that incredible introduction. Um, and for holding so um, brilliantly the kinds of poles that I find in my body of uh, Baltimore and Jamaica. I really, really appreciate that. Um, as well, I wanted to thank uh, Buffalo Street Books for having us um, and the uh, LGBT Resource Center for sponsoring the event, Elena uh, for sponsoring the event, 
um, and Marty as well for um, assisting so, so, so much. Um, and I wanted to give a, a kind of special additional thank you to um, my MFA family. Um, so I'm going to read actually from the gratitude section of the book and then we'll jump, or jump back in, into the poems. Thank you, MFA sisters, Chi, Jessica, and Anastasia, for multiplying me by you and you and you. Tremendous breath and steps we are, remaking atmosphere and geography with radical, ethical generosity, love. Brilliant, we women of color, the future with Futurity. Thank you, MFA aunties, Jasmine J, <laughs> Jasmine J, um, <laughs> and Christina, and Christina. Um, big brilliances you are, ambient future tenses. Um, and this is the last part is is for them and it is for everyone that I call a friend. Um, for me, uh, when I say that these folks are my sisters, that they're my family, it's it's not a metaphor. Like it's it's incredibly literal that y'all are my actual family, y'all are my actual sisters, um, and I love you so so much. Um, I don't know that I would be here right now um, if not for y'all. So thank you so much, um, and to all of all of my family, all of my friend family. Um, thank you all for being my family stronger than gravity. So the next poem that I'm going to read is uh, To the Lords of This Land. Um, and a little bit of context. Uh, so it, it continues in like an, a, a direct address to the state apparatus. Um, and for me, in, in terms of like the genesis of the poem, um, I lived in, in, in New York and Brooklyn for um, the writing of this, this whole book. Um, and at the time, uh, in the genesis of this poem, I was do taking a workshop at Cave Canem, and I would have to take the L train to Broadway Junction and then transfer to, or the A to Broadway Junction and then transfer the L back to my stop. And there was this group of black men there who were dressed in all white, and they would be there like every Tuesday, and they were proselytizing um, very loudly and, and boldly. And then whenever I would show up, they would start to like kind of in, in addition to their, like, the end is nigh, like, black people, we need to, like, pull ourselves up by whatever, they would start to kind of, like, blame queer, pe queer black people and trans black people for being, like, detriments to the race and for holding us back. And then they would kind of, they would very plainly say that we shouldn't exist. Um, and that was really difficult for me. Um, very ang It made me very angry, but also it made me feel... I'm kind of powerless because I wanted to fight those views, of course, but I couldn't. Um, and so rather than writing a poem to them, I thought to imagine or to write a poem to the kind of larger um, oppressive architectures and structures and lords, landlords, this feudal system, um, which are kind of making these these hate um, hate actions possible. To the lords of this land, in America, Every day I am trying to grow into cold light. You kill us in your imaginations, old neurons, fire and fire. In your minds, I am a departure-sized hole, and you say, jump, conclude into your plot, while my sisters hold warmly my dirt. Stamen and pistol, I am eagerly sunward, my face easterly, I heliotrope at night and wait. You set the sun continuously, stretching dawn into a horizon. Finally, I flower in the dark. See, I am a night blooming jasmine. You shroud the moon and claim night blindness. By any means, try to kill the idea of me 
When I say I was born in the wrong body, I mean I am stranded in a death throw you project like a limb. My flesh is neither false nor phantasm. How fossil you are in the face of possibility. I won't be diametrically soiled. There is world under world. The stars are not hereditary, nor are they sufficient. What light could name my raying swarth? I am the alternate ending, deus ex nigrum, a hole in the present, pollinating the future, green world without you, the dead language how I know. P.S. The land says the only cost of living is living. Um, and that's actually the poem that generated the title for the book, Deus Ex Negrum, which literally translated means God out of the black. It's um, very much a play on Deus Ex Machina, which um, is a kind of a, a grand magical solution at the, the end of a plot that solves a previously unsolvable problem. Um, and so I thought about that and I thought about shifting the genesis of the God from the machine, the machina, to the black, the black body, the blackness, space, body. Um, and this book could also be called Alternate Ending um, in that sense. The next poem I'm going to read is called Brooklyn Midfall. Um, it's, it's a contrapuntal, which uh, means that the poem, there are three poems in, in one poem. So the uh, left column is a poem, the right column is a poem, and then if you read across, it's also a poem. Um, and it's the only one of these that I've completed because you have to write it in three dimensions and you have to be constantly writing three poems at once. Every shift you make affects three, three different places um, or three different possibilities. Um, and so it's very challenging, but I'm, I'm very happy with that kind of effort of writing this poem for three years. Brooklyn, and so I'm gonna read the left column, the right column, and then I'll read across. Brooklyn Midfall. Against gravity and season, rush skyward, swipe, click, turnstiles rain bodies that crack, a threshold seconds from closing, hands reach, swell space in an open seam, Train over the East River traces its arc. Destiny, a nation of ruptured glass. The skies darkened, churning reflection. Then body just wants to pour into something so vast it is no place at all. Rows of three-story brownstones in shades of rose, peach, clementine, sky, earth seeds in and grows a garden blues. Some jealous seas expelling green, demanding green, like any black callous from the daily labor of living to a stone. Brown hands cascade to the home that is outside of whiteness, which is to say no place at all. Against gravity and season, rows of three-story brownstones rush skyward in shades of rose, peach, clementine, sky, swipe, click, turnstiles, rain bodies that crack, earth seeds in and grows, a threshold seconds from closing, a garden blues, some jealous seas, hands reach, expelling green, demanding green, swell space like any black in an open seam, callous from the daily labor of living, train over the East River traces its arc to a stone, destiny, a nation of ruptured glass, Brown hands cascade to the sky's darkened, churning reflection. The home that is, then body, just wants to pour outside of whiteness, which is to say, into something so vast it is no place at all. Uh, the next poem I'm going to read is called Fishnet Monster is Seen for the First Time in Harlem. 
And a number of these poems follow directly from experiences of like street harassment and other kinds of like violent humiliation that I described earlier. Um, and so this this is um, based on a very literal experience of mine um, in which, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just let the poem explain the narrative, but I, I guess as preface, um, something that interested me to follow in the writing of this poem was holding the kinds of monstrosity that I was being made, made to, that, I, that was being projected onto me in my body. So, um, right, there's a sense that like, um, the monster is not actually the figure, the monster is not actually the body, the monster is the idea of the monster, and the monster is the repository for the kinds of fears and other things that this is, the larger society doesn't want to um, deal with or understand or hold, and so they're projected onto oppressed others. And so um, I wanted to follow that monstrosity and to follow it into a kind of, um, to give a... Um, further dimension and voice and autonomy to this kind of monstrous figure that was being projected onto me. Fishnet monster is seen for the first time in Harlem. Fishnet, monster on the six train. Even the East River couldn't swallow, birthed in the attempt and spat out a misshape of colors and human clothes trick of dark skin and can't explain itself. Don't look like nobody's child but the seas. Black boy on the six train, never seen a fish with human lips, looks to his mother and points, bloodies, the pop-eyed windows to ugly fishnets, ugly thoughts. Trains collide at childhood, mouth a gash. Black boy's eyes moon up and pull the ocean from fishnets, fur, matted face, legs, chest. The boy, though, his black naps spiral and swirl, spiral and swirl, suck even the memory of water from gills, fishnet freak flailing, no sound, mouth a gash, black mother says nothing, not her monster to love into a person, not her ship hung, not him, salt water, fishnet, black sea hair, snakes and dead flowers, fishnet wants to cry but their distributary bear, can't go back, don't work, black boys, mirrors, sus, out. I'm going to move into some, some love poems now. Um, in my original drafting of the list of poems to read, there weren't any love poems, and I was like, oh, that's a grave error. we got to fix that. <laughs> Although all of the poems are self-love poems. So. Yes. Um, so instructions for the moon. Um, the moon um, comes to hold many different um, relationships for me. It's a very multivalent body. Um, um, and sometimes it's a kind of mother figure or a sister um, or an interlocutor or a goddess. But in this poem, I imagine the moon as a lover. Instructions for the moon. Go towards starshine and meet me at dusk. Tell me how blue you black this body, this whole coliseum of dust. Take my stilled battlefield. Pounding rain over bruises, pulsing. Now a field of heartbeats. Open the window and let your yester shine in. We, too, exchange whole crops of bright. You make the wind worth swaying to. Here, my ear dip, the brightest point of the constellation you utter with the wet of a tongue sized interstellar touch you bring out the sea in me so wade wade in this a slight detour and then we'll return to more of poems so this is the first poem in the collection um, it's called wade swim walk 
My first pair of panties floats idly in the sea of memory. Flashes, please, please me. Liquid eyeliner, pen, black tube of lip stain. Mascara brush like a clutch of turtles ferreting further from the gauntlet of shore. In the sea, memories froth and spit their pebbled laughter. He, 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 he. I stand on the water and walk, lips a glitter over the blue of drowning, heels three inches and star flowered, a pleated orbit of black dress, ring around the moon, earrings, cream of cloud colored nails. With no wind, my eyes a line with wings. Sure, anything could kill me, given the pollution of galaxy and industry. Sure, you could buffet me with stones, but what when I say I was raised from dust? Uh, the next poem is called In Which Our Wants Are Worlds. Um, and so the poem appears in, in three different sections, each on its own page. And each of those sections is its own world um, in which the we imagine, the, the wants of the we become their own um, universe space. In Which Our Wants Are Worlds. We have a house in the suburbs and it is quiet enough here to hear when flowers open their mouths to speak. It is spring. We have two kids and I stopped painting my nails. We have two prescription bottles of antidepressants and your loneliness swallows them all one night. We have a roof that doesn't leak in a Saturn view of Mercury with squeaky brake pads. Every time we slow down, it sounds like the car is warning. What small nag want? We speed up and our backs press flat against the seats. We speed up and want is the hum of the engine, the street lamps blurring past. We can't move. We bought a vehicle of want. Our hearts rot oppressively in the trunk. You tattoo an arc of I am, I am, I am. Want under your left breast. You dye your hair pink. You have your mother's smile and your father's sense of humor. When he yells, your lips flare and sun scorch the walls radiating an attractive array of want. I am not a good Chinese boy. Your grandmother cries over dinner, but you say you are very, very happy. I am eight, and the boy I love lives in the attic. I am eight and covet my sister's flower dress. No one tells me I can't have the boy and the dress. My want lives in marigold fingertips. My want is the god of touch. My want petals in spring and blooms all summer. Uh, I'm going to read one more from the book and then uh, last poem to close this out. Okay. Um, so the next poem is called I Love You But They Won't Stop Killing Us. Um, and for me it was a, a space of um, contending with, like, at the time, or at the time, me and this person weren't together, but um, it was written in the space of this relationship um, that the, the previous poem reckons with, um, in which um, to be, I guess, to be a black person in a relationship with a non-black person, there's a contention with the fact that we occupy different we's, but we have a same we. And so the kinds of threats that my collective black we face this person um, has some sense of safety from, but also this person provides me with some sense of safety. I love you, but they won't stop killing us. 
I love you, but the us in the title of this poem is discreet from the us curling on the couch like vines up the weeping fence. Its photos burnished by candlelight farewells, throwing shadows over frozen faces. I love you, but the earth is flat. Far too many of us thrown off the edge, our mothers' cries and curfews caught dead in some infinite well of blackness called space. I love you, but look cliffside, the ash, another celestial body combusting its light. Feel the gone homeostasis in my palms. Watch them twirl electric blue twine and rope into the night. Capturing the astral shudder on loop, you will ask if I'm okay and say you are scared for me. I love you, lovely little star, with your lovely little palms, pressing sorrow into soil. But why should we get to grow at all? All the while, hearts fall, smitten, acorns at the Adidas superstars in air, Jordans making pistol and petal of our feet and legs, coiling, shooting, firework, something loud and alive. I love you, I love you, I love you, but I adore infinite us, our brief, brilliant heat, and the other us, our own geography orbiting the black of space from the sphere of the couch, our little edgeless place. And the next poems are, they're not in this in this lovely chapbook. Um, these are poems that I've written after it. Um, though I, I guess um, in, in closing, I wanna just um, also thank this work, these poems, um, they, have literally saved my life and um, given me a space to, to find, to locate um, love and and posterity for myself within myself. Um, and even even still, I return to these books, uh, to these, these poems on, on difficult days, and they, they just echo in my body. Um, and also, this, these poems allowed me to be here, right? The, the poems in this manuscript were on my application <laughs> for it. This MFA, so um, thank you so much, lovely. Okay, so um, I'm gonna read um, a poem called Nebula Elsewhere. It looks like it's it's kind of a long poem, but it's it's in fragments, and so um, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not not super long, but um, this poem for me is is very much an, an origin. Um, we could say myth. Um, but an origin story. Um, and I began um, wanting to um, chart a kind of constellation. So Aracely Skirmai writes about the body as the space between the present body and everything that the body has lost. So figuratively, but also literally when you lose your hair or pieces of you know your skin, you're constantly shedding, um, that the body is that, that kind of the lines between all of those spaces. And ended up um, doing a different kind of work, but one that still holds a constellatory um, engine within it. Nebula Elsewhere. Wrong certificate of birth. Freak, freak. Playground in the mind. Little flower girl, swing. Set, dusk, me, me, me. Doctor says, gash, where? Draw my blood, here, here. Red bottle, green throttle. Black blank at the brink of bell, swing at which I shall, last earth record of self, swell, swell, back to yell, when every blood body said freak and hell, you swung off to somewhere else, ring, ring, flower, knell, 
Look, girl, leap, well. Unto the nowhere that holds the stars and everything else, hurtling from this trinket orb, gravity neck less to never more and ever else neck less. I try to see the hyper hued faces of now, but the future tense is where I'll bleak, and all the monuments of here go bust along the way. And I am so, so sorry. I am the blank. I am the bleep, I am forever, rip in the sky, rip in the family earth. Heave, hurt, weave her. Two pink pills, three blue pills, galaxy grove, spindle stars. Jasmine, jasmine, light, Light, light. Eyes whirl green. I whirled green. Black nothing, no clouds, gas green. Go, go, girl, starburst. Weave thread thicker than family. I line, 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 I. One, was not, two, tug, loop, three, follow, through, over, through, over, four, the moon construct, five, to aqueduct, dust and tufts, six, of ring light, seven, my dark face, swoon water, swoon water, swoon water. And then the world, blue, begat dabs of red over cheeks, eyes, Bottle cap tight, lover arms cross, clutch, girls, but every world tilts to slosh or drip to hold. I go, 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 engine, estrogen, supernova hypertrophied girl gender, ring my neck, 13 planets of girl, me in the face world, me in the face world. Let there be ma'am in my direction. Light is not the river of my reflection. Please don't he be leaf, she stream, me unstoppered green. Flowers girl in swing sets, play ground in a grove of galaxy, a girl in space. Another name for gravity. Whew. Okay, um, one last poem. Um, and so I, before I get into it, I just want to say again, thank you so much to everyone for being here. It's so cold outside and y'all are here and that is tremendous. Um, and um, I, I write very much um, with the aspiration of not only holding myself and my body in its fullest possibilities, but you to every kind of body and heart that it touches. I want to hold you in your fullest possibility as well. Um, and so that I, hope, I hope that you feel affirmed and encouraged um, tonight and that you love fiercely and persistently yourself. Of devotion, angel. Layers deep in song, my heart sounds like a melodic siren, thin as rope, the smallest girl jumping by the second. Cover your ears with the sound of my body, slapped with, ape, with pavement, ambling, graceful as it can, the reverse gospel of grooves, jukes, planes, angles, my heart would angel of devotion. Can you hear the plea pumped in ecstatic gestures of will like will to live like one day I will be cut open, rearranged and put back together. This is the sound of blood having done its best now at the edge of a cliff or a knife 
waiting for the right moment to fall in stereo. My heart gives and does not give in or out or up, squeezing by the second a future I will live, yes, in page and screen and to inform, yes, a skeleton rivered and yes, 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 my body is a future ringing with yes, is, yes, yes, my body is a future, yes, a skeleton rivered in yes, in page and screen and to inform a future I will live, yes, in or out or up, squeezing by the second my heart gives and does not give, moment to fall in stereo, waiting for the right of a cliff or a knife, having done its best now at the edge and put back together. This is the sound of blood. I will be cut open, rearranged of will like will to live like one day. Can you hear the plea pumped in ecstatic gestures of devotion? My heart would angel of grooves, jukes, planes, angles, graceful as it can, the reverse gospel slapped with pavement, ambling. Cover your ears with the sound of my body, the smallest girl jumping by the second like a melodic siren thin as rope layers deep in song my heart sounds of devotion angel thank you all so much please get on